Hello, everyone. Welcome to another story tale staging inside the Home Staging TV YouTube channel. I'm your host, Tori Toth. Today's guest has been in real estate over 27 years. She is the podcast host of Home Stagers and Designers on Fire, has owned and operated a successful home staging business since 2005, and is a trained personal and professional development coach, better known as the Home Stagers Coach. Please welcome Marianne Cherico. Hello. <laughs> so happy that you invited me here. I, I miss you and I love collaborating on things with you. I know. How what have you been up to? Well, I've been, you know, I've been really busy. Um, I was just kind of mentioning to you that our family's been going through a lot of things. My husband has had cancer, he's you know, battling cancer and he just had a CAR T cell therapy and um, lots have been going on this year. It's been a tough year at the Terrico Homestead, but there's so many good things that have come out of it. And um, I'm actually going to be doing a podcast episode on that. That'll be coming up um, because all of us have things that are going on in our life, right? I mean, it's just life and it, it's all playing in the background while we're building our businesses and how do you navigate all that and you know stay on top of your game while you're taking care of personal things so um yeah i think you know i think this um topic is perfect and you're the perfect person to be talking about this topic today which is talking about mindset and business we are at the end of the year so First of all, tell us how we should kind of manage dealing with those personal things and, you know, trying to attract new business, right? Because as an entrepreneur, they all come together. Yeah. And, and anybody that says that, you know, business isn't personal or, you know, your life doesn't affect your business. It's not true. It's how you handle it that really matters. So I haven't really talked about in my business about what's going on in the background of my life. So a lot of people probably don't know because I especially didn't want my clients to have to worry about it or I didn't want people to feel as though they had to feel sorry for me or or what I was going through. I just really wanted to save my energy to do my business and take care of my family. And it's, it's a dance like with anything in life. Um, I am a very focused person when I focus on getting tasks accomplished. I carve out time to do that. And I don't have any distractions because I know I don't work well. I think a lot of creatives have that squirrel brain where we can yes. be pulled in so many different directions. So um, I get up early in the morning often, especially if I'm going to write. I know that the morning is the best time for me. But me too. what I will yeah, right. It's just, mm -hmm. it's our optimal time. And I think knowing that is really important because some people it's late at night and that's when they are at their, in their genius zone, in their zone of genius. Um, so dealing with personal things that are sometimes heartbreaking when you're going through it, you know, cancer, especially is a roller coaster ride. And, um, but kind of compartmentalizing what's going on in your business so that you can show up fully for your clients, whether they be design clients or staging clients or coaching clients or whatever it is, video clients in your classes. Yeah. It's You really have to be strategic about it because I didn't want to miss a beat with being there for him when he was in the hospital and making sure he felt cared for, even though he's so low maintenance, it'd be like, Mary, you just do whatever you have to do. But still, you know, he was my priority. So I would go into Boston, which is, you know, sometimes about an hour and a half ride each way and try to go in every day for those three weeks. And if I couldn't go in because I had commitments from my business would FaceTime. So you're always finding ways to kind of navigate them both, but it's a dance like anything in life. And I think that one of the things that I see with my coaching clients sometimes is that they use family obligations as an excuse not to build their business because they're afraid. Mm. And there's a difference between being intentional about what your priorities in your life and making sure you're spending time with that and not setting boundaries 
and becoming a people pleaser to a fault, and then using that as an excuse to not do the things that you're afraid of. So this is where mindset comes in and really calling out that stuff in your mind, like really doing a deeper dive. Sometimes people, I know myself, I've worked with many coaches through the years. I'm still working with a coach. Sometimes people need help from a coach to help them see that. But you can juggle what's going on in your personal life and your business. You just have to really be mindful and strategic of your time and be intentional and focused on what your priority is in that moment or that hour, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. I have a side, I have a side question out of out of mindset though, because we're talking about, you know, having this business and personal life. And nowadays, like to be online, to be social, people want that human touch. So how much, you know, people are always scared of sharing too much or not enough. So what's your advice on that? Oh my God, I love your questions here. This is why you're Tori <laughs> Cho. I mean, um, that's such a good question because I have struggled with that. But the mentors that I watch, I'm I'm up all night half the time listening to podcasts. I mean, I have my own, but I listen to Amy Porterfield all the time and Biz Chicks and um, you know, James Wedmore and my coach is Rick Mulready. He's he's big in the Facebook world and um online marketing world. And all of my mentors are saying that it's it's good to be more transparent. But I felt as though I couldn't do that while I was kind of going through it because I was too vulnerable, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. I was very, um, it was tough. And I didn't want to show up from that place. I wanted to, I, I can do it now in retrospect So I talk about it in my next podcast episode that that'll be out next Monday or Tuesday. And I talk about what's going on in our life and how, you know, I kind of navigated that and still ran my business and showed up on social and was there for my clients. So how long, how much should you be transparent? I think you should do it when you can be objective enough about it, that it's not emotional. Mm -hmm. And I think that... I don't think that, I mean, Amy Porterfield, I'll tell you, who I think is amazing. You, you obviously know who she is. Yeah. Um, She has been becoming more vulnerable in her podcast episodes and stuff. And I think sometimes peppering your humanity into your business. And I, to your point, Tori, I think people are wanting that more. People want to work with people they know, like, and trust that are real people they're going to help them get from where they are to where they want to go, right? Whether it be anything, any job. And I think that being real is important. I like to work with real people. And, you know, I'm not everybody's cup of tea, and that's okay. And that's yeah. what we have to realize, too. It's okay if I'm not for you. You know, um, there's other coaches that are perfect for you. So I guess... I guess everybody has to decide that for themselves. Mm-hmm. What, what is, I'd like to interview you in that. What are your <laughs> thoughts on that? I'm curious. Um, I mean, I agree with you where I think, you know, you have to be ready to share that piece of information. Um, you know, some of the personal stuff that I've been going through too, which I can't wait to tell it, but I feel like I'm still restricted Um you know, in some aspects until I finally see a result. So um, it's, it's challenging, right? Because you want to be authentic and transparent, but at the same time, you know, you also need to protect the the future and the outcome and what's, and what's going to be, you know, happening down the line. So, and tying it all in. So it makes sense with your actual brand story and your mission and your values and everything else. And as an entrepreneur, I feel like, um, again, that whole personal and business intertwine, it, it's got to come out some way. So for me, it's like, why not take control of the narrative and and make sure it fits into my business versus, uh, you know, just having it out there and people are gossiping or doing whatever they want to be doing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> It's funny because one of the things I coach my um, clients on, and and really they're all women, is, you know, 
you have to stop worrying about what people will think because yeah and and all of this stuff i'm 64 years old all the stuff i learned through the school of hard knocks i did not i am not i'm a sensitive person you know but um but i think that that's when people get out and they do the videos more and stuff like that because they stop worrying so much what people think about them and i always say you want to carve out this life that you want which as far as i know if you're not shirley mcclain this is your only life right so why are you going to let what they're thinking why are you going to you know let them rent rent space in your head and half the time you don't even really know what people are thinking anyways and everybody's got their own agenda and if you just want to create this beautiful business for yourself get out there and show up and do it and be visible and put your stake in the ground and say you know this is who i am and this is what i have to offer my clients and if i'm your cup of tea great and if i'm not let go of the attachment of the outcome and bless and release them you know I, exactly. And I'd love to know anyone out there uh, checking us out live or watching the replay, what's kind of a mindset that you are stuck at right now in your business or personally, uh, if you feel free, like if you free, feel free to share in the comments. Tell us all your uh, secrets. Hello. We won't tell anybody. <laughs> we won't tell your secrets on YouTube. <laughs> no, it will, won't be any replays. Or... We'll go um, viral. <laughs> So first, can you just explain mindset a little bit, like to anybody who, you know, obviously we know like the definition, but why, how does it affect success so much? I love that question because I don't think that people understand mindset and they say, oh, it's woo, it's this, it's that. And they undermine the incredible value that it is to build your business. I truly believe mindset is the lens through which you see everything. and. Um, your thoughts, the thoughts that you think every day turn into beliefs that are literally wired into the neural pathway of your brain. So because our brains don't like to work really hard, because we couldn't remember all the things that we have to remember, even just how to breathe, right? Um, our brains form neural pathways. So any belief that we have, whether it's true or false, becomes the lens through which we see things. So for instance, just as an example, you're growing up in a family and your parents always say to you, don't get too big for your britches now. You know, the tall poppy gets cut down, right? Or you're in high school and um, you're in a group of girls and uh, some of them feel threatened if you are a little bit more whatever, right? And so you tend to, you know, I'm just saying this is an example of people that have coached and stuff. So you tend mm -hmm. to play small and hold back. And you don't know why you're doing that. You don't know why you're not showing up visibly online. Or when you meet with a real estate agent, you're calling them and you're meeting with them and you're doing the actions that you think you should be taking in order to move the needle, but the actions aren't endowed with an empowered mindset because you're not really owning your value. You're not articulating your value in a confident way because on some level, maybe you don't really believe it, right? So, I mean, mindset, we could talk about this for 24, 24 seven, but it's your thoughts become your beliefs, which cause the actions that you take or don't take. Uh -huh. Maybe you don't call that agent because you, you buy into, well, houses are selling like hotcakes. So that agent really doesn't need me, but they do because they're still leaving money on the table. And I could give you whole arguments about why they need you right now. Just read the book Ninja Selling and how agents are fighting for their commissions now and they need value added propositions to make them um, stand out and get those listings. That's what pays their bills, right? So your thoughts become your beliefs, which cause the actions you either take or don't take or that you take the action and it's not an empowered, from an empowered mindset. And that's what causes your results. That's why mindset's so important. You see it all the time in your video class. You, we get these yeah. incredibly talented designers and stagers and realtors that are doing incredible work and they're afraid to show up on video. Yes, exactly. They don't know what to say. They they feel like they're going to, um, I don't know, be, be judged or they don't like the way, or they're judging themselves. <laughs> and, 
yeah. And I love I love to tell them that they're already out there in the world doing this stuff. So you know why not put it to video? So it could be making money for you while you are or out there getting you discovered while you're out there physically doing what it is you need to do to be making money. Video is everything in marketing right now. You have to get on the bandwagon. And, and you know, both of us come from a TV and film background. I, you know, am still in the Screen Actors Guild. I just pay my dues and stuff. And I've done film and television and theater. And I'll tell you, and I, I have a degree in dramatic arts. That's what I went to college for. I still, when I started doing Facebook Lives, I imposter syndrome everything. I'm a trained actress. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, I was scared to death and I thought all the same things. They're going to judge me. Who am I to do this? Blah, 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 blah. So it's not like you and I haven't dealt with those fears before. We just decided that what we wanted was bigger than our fears, right? Yes. Yeah. And I think you have to go, you know, you kind of have to look at your fears straight in the face and especially as a business owner, um and mindset like my mindset has changed a lot my conquering fears has changed a lot by being a business owner and not you know just having a nine to five job um and so i think the job helps you grow as you help grow with the job <laughs> you are so spot on you know i think that as you grow your business you're grow you're growing as a person you're learning that Failure doesn't mean anything if, except for mindset, what you make it mean, right? That, you know, um, like I'm taking with Rick Mulready, I'm taking that Facebook class and I've been in this program for about a year. And so what he proposes is that, you know, you do these Facebook ads and then you look at the data, you mm -hmm. look at the data and that informs how you move forward. You know, which audience responded the most? How many conversions were there? Um, blah, 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 blah. But the whole point is that you don't say, oh, you know, this really, I was really bad or I failed. You say, okay, this is the data. And it's like marketing metrics, right? You look at the data, you look at your Google Analytics or whatever, and you say, okay, what are people interested in? And so, there's no failure in business. We have to start as perfectionists and designers and stagers and creatives beating ourselves up because you're going to fail a thousand times. In fact, it should be your mission to, you know, call a thousand agents and get 10 of them. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what agents used to do when I was in the real estate world. They did all this cold calling and, you know, but, but come from an empowered mindset. Like when you make that call, own your value, know what you're going to say, know what the objections are going to be and be prepared, right? So what are some of the things that we could focus on to change our minds? Or like, first of all, let's go back. What's like one of the biggest um, mindset issues you see among stagers, designers, real estate agents? What's the biggest one that you've seen? And then how can we change that? Yeah, this is what I... I honestly, it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight, but a lot of my clients who are just out there doing incredible things, like they're so talented and they just, they don't see them the way that I see them. You know, they think they're, they have imposter syndrome or um, they're afraid to raise their prices uh, because they think that they won't get the work or they are intimidated by the real estate agents. That's epidemic in the staging world. They think for some reason, these real estate agents have power over them. So I teach them how to shift that paradigm and come from a place of service where they're showing the agents how they actually help the agents build their business. I even have PowerPoints that um, are specifically for the agents from the stagers. And it's all about help how they help them build their business. It's not about staging. It is, but it isn't, you know, but the messaging is about how I can help you build your business and to shift that paradigm of power. It's, it's a lot of imposter syndrome, not owning their value um, and experientially trying things that they're afraid of and then learning from it. And that's when you really see the growth, you know, because I can tell people all day and all night, and they can come and listen to my podcast for free and, and listen to this for free and go to all the free things. But unless you have skin in the game, 
-hmm. and you experientially do things, you're not going to grow. You're going to absorb things. It's, it's putting yourself out there, shaking like a boot and going and doing those Facebook lives. It's making the calls when you're afraid. It's going to real estate conventions when you're scared to death. And some of my clients have been doing that. And it's, you know, the more you do it, the better you get like anything, right? Yeah, it's very true. And I think another um, thing in terms of mindset is that everyone likes to compare uh, themselves yeah. to someone who's been doing it a very, very long time. And you have no idea what they went through to get to where they are. So you can't be comparing yourself to someone who's already taken that path and you can idolize them or, you know, um, want to learn from them or something, but, you know, comparing yourself when you're not even on the same level, I think can be detrimental. I totally agree. And let's face it, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors going on on the internet, right? Everybody puts their best face forward. And the fact is, you know, I hear these stages talking about, you know, seven figure businesses and this and that. And you know what? I want to know what your profit is because you can make a hundred grand doing consults all day and all night. You charge enough for the consults, you get enough realtors to refer you. You could have a consult based business with no overhead and make a hundred thousand uh dollars -huh. but i think that sometimes people buy into that and i also see that after the pandemic a lot of these big companies are having a tough time and they don't talk about it enough um and there's not enough transparency sometimes because we're all vulnerable we all go through ebbs and flows in our business and you know failed launches and believe me i've been there and you just keep what the reason why we're still around, Tori, is because we just keep getting back up. You That's know, true. and putting ourselves out there. And we also do another thing, not to pat us on, us on the back, but and this is what we want. The reason I'm saying this is because this is what I think people have to do more of. You got to show up more and you got to serve more. If you want to get the business from real estate agents, start showing up. You know, teach them how they can work with you. They don't know. We assume that they know, right? Yeah. We assume that they know, but they're in their heads. They might be thinking, I got to pay $5,000. My seller is going to want me to pay that. I'm not going to call that stager. We don't know. We need to ask more questions and teach them how they can work with us. Teach them how we can actually help them, right? Yes. Does, does that answer your question or did I go on? <laughs> it answered your it answered the question um so what what are some ways i guess what are some tricks or tips in order to set goals for 2022 what should people be looking at or focusing on that's a really good question um I think honestly, people need to keep it simple. Like I have a template that I have my clients fill out and, you know, what are your goals? What are your boundaries? What will you say yes to? What will you say no to? Some of it's mindset stuff and some of it's action stuff, but just to really kind of dumb it down, I don't, that's probably not the right word, but to keep it simple, I would say pick two to three big goals, right? So for instance, I want to do my website over. That's one of my goals just that goal alone alone and i know a lot of my clients want to do their websites over and i'm like well, let's get money in the door first right let's get those connections with the agents and get money in the door you can flop something up on a house i just got a call from somebody i have an old house thing that i put as my client i don't even have a website for staging anymore and i just got so it's i think we get caught up in stuff if you're going to do a website it's going to take you months to do it right it really is i mean you know, you have to say, okay, I want to do a website. Okay, well, I want to research different looks for websites to get an idea of what I like. I might want to do some work on my branding. What offerings am I going to have? Do I want to refine my packages? Do I want to do some in an intro video? Do I want some of my clients to do testimonial videos? How am I going to optimize the back end for SEO and um, page load time and all that? I don't even know what I don't know. Maybe I should research what I don't know. So I'm when I'm hiring a website designer. I so, you know, it seems like something simple and a lot of people underestimate 
the scope of it and then they underestimate the time and then they get frustrated that they can't get it done within that time. So I would say pick two, three talks, big goals for the year, and then break it down into 90 days and then back it up by literally calendaring in the steps that you need to do uh -huh. in order to create that website. So that, that's one of my tips. Another one is um, one thing that I love to do with my clients, and I do it for myself, and I think you'd like this, Tori, is I pick a theme for the year, and it's kind of the litmus test through which I look at everything. And um, for instance, one year when I was um, leaving my real estate job and I was scared to death, I it was this girl is on fire, double my staging income. That was my my theme and every time i got nervous i'd play that song really loud and i'd say you got this and you know i psyched myself <laughs> up because i was scared to death right i was afraid i was going to let my family down and just really scared you know um but this year because of everything going on in my life it's my theme is my best year ever and what that means to me is just so much gratitude more love, more gratitude, more kindness, more money, more um, giving to my clients, more, you know, focusing on those things that are really important and just really coming from gratitude and traveling, doing stuff that we haven't been able to do for two years because Jimmy's so immunocompromised, like seeing our grandchildren and um, stuff like that. So I just want to look at this. This is going to be my best year ever, both personally and in business. And the litmus test that I'm going to look through is what brings me joy, um, being around people that I love and um, that kind of thing. It's that simple. I mean, it's not make a million dollars or uh -huh. yeah, I'm going to grow my business. But so some of the other um, ideas and some of my clients have done themes because everybody's at a different season in life family first, work smarter, not harder, right? Um, make business fun again, right? People forget that business can be fun. Only work with clients I love. It can be yes. fun, right? Um, leverage my time and make more money. That's one that a lot of my clients are working on right now, like, you know, as a theme. Uh, Mine this year was time to nurture and i feel like it needs to continue on to the, the next year tori you know what i i love that you picked that theme and and you are such a dynamo and you you put out a lot you put out a lot and yeah i'm i'm as, as your friend i'm really happy that that's your theme i really am yeah i think both personally and professionally it kind of uh encompassed what I was trying to do this year, I got a little sidetracked, but like what you were saying, just kind of picking up where you, where you were and keep going. Don't, you know, dwell in the negative, right? Because then that just affects your mindset. Yep. And, and surround yourself with people that care about you, that you trust will um, always be there for you, listen to you, give you good advice. Um, and you know who they are. I mean, you don't, you can, you know who those people are that you could call in the middle of the night and say, you know, I just need to talk, right? But yeah. you, I love that you picked that. And, and I'm so glad that you pointed that out because if you don't give yourself the oxygen, you will burn and crash. We've all been there, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you start giving yourself that care more, that's going to free up energy. You're going to be better than ever. It sounds counterintuitive because you're saying, oh, well, I should be doing this. I should be doing that. Right. But sometimes you need to slow down to speed up. I know. Patience. It is a virtue. I've gotten none of it. I, I don't have any. Ask my husband. I'm not, it's not my um, forte, but I work yeah. on it. Yeah. You look radiant, though. You Thank really do. You. So do you. And yeah. so if people want to learn more about you, where should they go? What, I mean, what can they get from you? Where do they start? They can have anything they want. <laughs> um, well, I work with my clients both one-on-one -on -one and I have a group coaching program and um, they can set up a complimentary discovery call the group program. 
It's a year commitment and it's $199 a month. They meet with me three times a month and we have a private Facebook group. It's an incredibly wonderful, intimate group. I lead all the sessions. People get all their questions answered and it's very it's very tailored to each of the members and what they want and need because they all have different wants and needs and different mm -hmm. business models. One-on-one -on -one coaching, um, it's usually a three-month commitment and uh, to start with, unless they just want a one-off session. And um, so those are the big things that I'm offering right now. And I'm in the middle of doing a class right now, but that's um, that's closed. And my podcast, so they can, yes. you know, they can email me at interiors by Marianne, M-A-R-I-A-N-N-E -N -N -E, at comcast.net, or they can DM me or PM me and we can set up a complimentary discovery session to see if coaching is a good fit. And I'll tell you if I don't think it is, because I want people that are, you know, are successful. I want them to, you know, know that it is, you have to still work on yourself and take action and do stuff like that. I don't want to just take people's money and then you know, I and not you. do the work, right? <laughs> I know. It's like, can you please do some work, please? Victoria, <laughs> I can just picture you saying it too, please. <laughs> I love you. Yeah. Um, and then my podcast is Home Stages and Designers on Fire. And you can listen to Tori Toast's episode. Nice. There's a lot of great speakers um, on and the podcast. And they find that anywhere? Yeah, Apple, um, on my website, coachingbymarianne.com, um, Libsyn, Spotify. It's on all the big podcast networks. And so. I love it. So, guys, if you are looking for a coach who will help you grow your business your way, Marianne, my good friend right here, she is your gal. I would recommend going to coachingbymarianne.com. Marianne, thank you so much for joining me today on our final episode. Of I would never ever be here. say no to you, ever. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And guys, if you have questions um, for Marianne, please put them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, what are some of your goals for 2022? What are you kind of still stuck on in terms of mindset? Tell us below and join the conversation. We hope you have an amazing end of 2021 and we will see you here next year. Take care.